two, one. All right, guys, you're welcome to the chit chat with me, Idafi Matthias Yogane, the Elegant One of Sports on Elegant TV. I have a young man with me, but before I bring this young man on the screen, let me give you guys a, a background. I was, I was somewhere, I was having this conversation with uh, a couple of friends, and they were just saying that, you know how people used to say footballers are drop out, footballers are illiterate, footballers are the reason why they behave the way they behave. You know, those that regular conversation that we always have. So, uh, and I said to them, but I mean, I played football and I'm a graduate, even though I didn't do my youth service. And, you know, Somebody has now pop up this name. I said, okay, I know one Philip Otele, who's a graduate and who's playing football. And then I also said something about Shea Lofejana, who's a master's degree holder, getting close to his PhD now, and then Victor Ezeji as well, and a few others. And long and short, I had to go track Philip Otele. He's a job boy, grew up in the faculty, he's from Bayesa went to school, university in the UK, and he's now playing his professional football in Lithuania. <laughs> I hope I pronounce that word, Lithuania. So, uh, Philip, you're welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Okay. Uh, so, uh, let's get to know you. I, I hope what I just said about you is, is accurate. Yes. Yes, it is. Okay, so... I would, I'm going, in the way it is, it's your story. So you're the one that would tell it better. Say, if you're looking for the eye of the fish, you go to the head. Is that's, that's, that's how they say it when I was growing up. So it's always good to hear from you. What is happening in Lutuina? What club do you play for? What division are they in? What position are they on the table? Um, I play in FK Kaunas Jogres in Lithuania. And we play in like the top, the top league. And right now we played only one game, like in the start of this new season. But due to the coronavirus, we couldn't like keep on playing. So we played only one game this season. But we had like a full preseason in January and February. So right now we're just like on a break because of the outbreak. And right now we're in second position because we played our first game and we won. Okay, uh, so that's like where you are right now. So let's go back to your beginning. You are, how old are you? I'm 20, turning 21, April 15. Okay, so, so, I'm a couple of days. You're almost a birthday mate with my son. My son will be eight years on the 15th of April. Okay, so in a couple of days, uh, five days from now to be precise, you'll be 21. Yes. You're already a university graduate? Yes, I am. What did you study in the university? At what university was that? Um, sports management and marketing, and the university is University of Teesside, Teesside University in Middlesbrough in the UK. Okay, so I can, I can safely say that whatever happens with your career, if you blow up the very highest level playing for Real Madrid, Barcelona, Manchester, you already know what it means. You're already equipped with the education to manage your education and your brand and your personality, right? Yes. Okay. Okay, so let's let's backtrack now. Let's do the catapults. Let's go back to the very beginning. Where were you born? I was born in Port Harcourt. Grew up there. And that was when I started playing football. I always remember playing when I was young with my friends and family, my cousins, my brothers, and everyone in my family. Like, they're into football, especially my dad and my brother. So that's what got me into football as well. So, so let's talk about your dad. How, when you say your dad is into football, let's talk about that part. So when I was always young, he always used to like go and play football, like with, like a team, and also he always used to watch football all, all the time, and that's what influenced me as well. So, but he didn't like play at the professional level. He just had like like love for the sports, and he always played whenever he could. So how about your mom? Because mothers don't really gel with football that much. How about your mom? My mom was not really into football, but as time went by, she started getting more interested because she saw that I was interested and everyone in the house as well. So she started getting more into football. So now that you're, you're playing professional football, how is mommy and daddy taking it? 
Very well. They, they've always supported me when I was young, and they are still supporting me now. Like, they watch all my games, they watch the highlights, they watch my personal videos, they follow up my club on social media, everything. And they've always been following me, following me up since I came to the UK, even and since I moved to the Premier as well. So they've been very supportive of me. And I thank um, them for that. Your story seems like a very smooth one. You grow up in the backwards, seems like okay, your parents have money, so everything is fine. You know, now before man became a good school for London or UK. So okay, you have someone coming in, right? Okay, so yeah, yeah. You have all this comfort around you. Is that, is that what you want me to believe right now? No, I wouldn't say that because I had to I had to work out because obviously if you're not disciplined, if you're not good, there's no way you can there's no way you can make it. It's not all about being good as well. You have to be disciplined, you have to be um, like confident in yourself and you have to have like support. So I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say I had a smooth journey, but I'll just say like I'm very grateful to my parents because they, not in terms of like financial support, I mean like um, mental support, they were always there for me because obviously I know that in Nigeria there are some parents that don't encourage their kids to play football. So when I say they were supportive of me, I mean like they always encouraged me. I told them that I want to really play football and they helped me and they always supported me. and. Obviously, I had to grind as well. I had to, <laughs> because I was always playing with people who were, like older than me and stuff. So yeah. I had to work hard as well. So that's it. Okay, so uh, the time you were at Eastside University Middlesbrough, how you know for you to go to school, you have to like give up a bit of the football. You okay. play, but you give up a bit of it. So you're focusing in in, in the education, the academic side, and then you're not playing football. But immediately you finish. School, you were able to go straight up. Talk to me about that side. How were, I mean, who was coaching you? What were you doing? How did you manage to keep fit? You were not distracted. You know, everything just seemed to like falling in place. But you come on, you're 20, you're going to 21, you're already signed pro. Yeah, I had to, I had to multitask a lot. It was, it was really hard, like, based on like focusing on football and focusing on school because everyone knows that you have to like put your, puts your all in like when you're like in university and stuff. But I always like found time and always like dedicated myself well. I was always um I was playing for my, my university team as well as another team like a semi professional team on Saturdays. So because my friend hooked me up from like the university team we're playing we always played like on Wednesdays our matches and then the semi professional team on Saturdays. So I was always playing for both of them, performing well. So that's when I started to have like scouts coming to talk to me, coaches coming to talk to me. And I just kept on going, you know, it was hard. Like I would go to the library, stay, read, study everything. And then the next day I have training or I have a match. I just had to I just had to fight it out. Like it was hard. I won't I won't lie. I would say the truth it was hard to like do both of them. Because I was focused as in football as as much as I was like with my academics, so it was quite hard. But I still I, I managed to do it. Okay, so talking about your academics, what what's the grade? Did you come out with a grade that you can be proud of? You can look at your certificate and say, I'm "Proud at putting this effort." This is the result that came out. Or is is one of those kind of results? No, I would say obviously if I focused on only university, I would have got the like the highest grade possible but i'm proud of what i achieved because um because i i put in the work and i i tried to do football i tried to do university as well all together so the grade i have i'm i'm proud of it okay so let's get to the 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 year to the day you know you finish school while in school mm -hmm. so already coming to watch you coaches were already coming to watch you obviously by my own understanding, let me just take it now. Let me assume that you're not you're not a British citizen, right? Yes. So that's probably one of the reasons why you're not playing in England. Now, how did you get from England to Lithuania? Because I mean, there must be some trials, some conversation, agents. Talk to me about how a 20-year-old boy got all of this going for him. 
So uh, I have an agent and he helps me to like secure the move, but he always said that because they covered like my games, like my the games I was playing for my semi-professional team and some of my university matches. So I had a lot of video footages. So I had it like sent out to different like clubs and I was always sending it to my agent so he would help me like sending out to other clubs to like secure a move because as you know the situation in England if you don't if you're if you're not a citizen it's very hard for you to, to yeah. play up there. I had some offers there like with Sunderland and because I was still in up north and Sunderland is up north and yeah. But due to like work permit issues, I couldn't sign with them or anything. So, so my agent helped me secure the move to Lithuania, and I'm very grateful for that. Okay, uh, I've been in the Eastern Bloc of Europe for, I mean, like Sweden, Norway, Denmark, uh, Finland, Iceland. I've been in that region, but I've not been to Lithuania. So I, I need to know. It was a rude awakening for me. For me, I was used to Nigeria, London, UK, like Germany. Then I went to Sweden. It was a rude awakening. How was it for you when you first got to Lithuania and the culture, the food, the people, the lifestyle? For a boy coming from River State, I'm, 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 a, I'm a worried boy, but I'm a Potakot boy too. I schooled in Potakot. I went to uniform and I also played for Sharks and Dolphins. Now, now now, now, let's put it this way. With the switch to Lithuania, what kind of country is Lithuania? Is it a bubbling country like a Potakot or a very quiet town like maybe Akure? I would say they're, they're a quiet town. They're not really bubbly, bubbly, but like, I would say they're a quiet town, yes. I would say they're a quiet town. So how did a Potakot boy, a, a real Potakot boy, a bubbling Potakot who went to the UK in easily in, in that town? I would say because um, I'm, I got kind of history because when I went to university, I did the foundation year first. I skipped that part. I did like a foundation year first in Reading, which is like close to London. And that, was, that place was quite like bubbling and everything, if you get what I mean. And then I moved up, up north. My first day there was. I didn't have a lot of, I didn't make a lot of friends. I was always on my own and stuff like that. So I think that kind of made me like get used to being alone, get used to like moving to a new place. So when I moved there, it was not, it was hard at first, but I, like I was used to it because I've done it before in the past, if that makes sense. And I adapted well and everything. So now I have a lot of friends. and. So now, Fine, uh, that's it. What, what is your regime like? You go to training. What, I mean, if the coronavirus is not there, what's, the, what's your routine like? You do training, you come back home, you eat, watch TV, play games, and see, and prepare for matches. What's it like? You just said everything because that's the nature of that. I just, I just wake up, have breakfast, I go for training, train, come back, come back home, Netflix, watch some movies, and. Um, play games, eat, have lunch or dinner, and then talk to family, talk to friends, and watch some football videos as well. And basically, that's what I do. Can you say at 20, going to 21, you're living your dream right now? No, not it's at all. I've started the dream. I'm sleeping now, but I'm not started living the dream. Right? <laughs> I like that. I like sleeping now. Okay, so... Uh, every footballer have big dreams. Like I always wanted to play for Ayas. I, I mean, I've not said this to a lot of people. When people talk about, it, I'm an Arsenal fan, but I've always wanted to play for Ayas. I've always wanted to be coached by Louis Van Gaal. Like I wanted Louis Van Gaal to coach me. And then there was also this subtle dream. I'm not in my United fan. I just wanted Salah Sala to coach me. And then there were these big coaches I wanted to coach me: Marcelo Lippi, Otma, Giovanni Papatoni. As Alex Ferguson, Luis Banga, and possibly Goros. So, for you, what, what's the dream? Like, what thing do you want to play? Your dream team to play for? The dream team you want to work under? The dream players you want to play with? And what's your dream for the national teams? Now you're going to be 21, so your target should be under 23 and Super Eagles going forward. What are the dreams? Um, 
my my main goal, my, like my main dream, is to play for uh, the team I always supported, which is Arsenal. Um, I've always had yeah, <laughs> I've always had a dream. Yeah. But also before I get there, I want to I also want to play for Dortmund. Like I really like the team, the way they bring in like young players. Like I want to play in the German league as well, because because of the kind of football they play, they play like fast-paced attacking football, which I think will suit my game very well. So I really want to play for Dortmund and Arsenal. Those are like the two clubs that go in my mind. And for the national team as well, I want to like uh, obviously first of all you have to do very well for your club. I feel because I want to earn earn it, and like when I get there, I'll be like, yeah, I really work hard for it. Right now. I just want to do well for my team and I know that with the right exposure and everything, with the right games, the right goals, assist, everything, I know that hopefully with God's grace, um, the call-up is going to come and I'll be ready. Okay, so let's talk about your position because we've not even measured that. I don't even know if you're a goalkeeper, you're a defensive midfielder or attacker. How do you play in the field? I play on the left wing or on the right wing. But I can play as a striker and number 10 because I've played there. I've played basically the front four before. Like different coaches have used me in different positions, but I'll say I'm more effective on the left or right wing. So uh, I'm going to name some players. Tell me the one that the game feels like Leroy Sane, Leroy Sane, Ryan Stalin, uh, Mares. I am Robin, Frank Ribery. Which one do which when you play? Which one when you play? Which one would I look at and say, oh, you, you remind me of this player? I would say Sterling and Ribery. Okay, Sterling and Ribery. All right, uh, so uh, as we are going through all of these, mm -hmm. what would you want to say? are the things that you sacrifice to get here. Because your mates, I mean, first off, the UK is not a place I would like to raise my children. It's not a place I would want to independently send my children to. Because the, the knife culture, the gang culture, the drug culture is on the rise once again, like it was in the 60s and 70s and mid 80s. I, I, I'll be afraid to send my children to the UK, you know. So how are you able to navigate through all those the knife gun, the black boys who do anything that they like, the ones that are always wearing hood. You know what I mean? How are you, yes, able to, yes, you spent four years in the UK, right? Yes. So how are you able to navigate your way and go off and in contact with them? I would say my family and friends helps me a lot, and also my mindset as well, because I always saw like the bigger picture. I always saw that oh. I, I want to make it as a footballer. I have to make some sacrifices. I don't have to like party all weekend. I don't have to drink. I don't have to do all this. So I always had that mindset. I always had that mindset that this is going to come. This is like the this is my bigger goal which I have to achieve, and I know how to make some sacrifices. And I also had some good friends always telling me that I have to take football serious. I always had that even in secondary school. People telling me that I should take it serious. I should do this. I should do that. And like my friends always advising me that. Basically, like football is what I should do. That I'm a very good player. That I should just focus. And they were always giving me advice, like my family, my friends, telling me to keep my head down and everything. And also me too. I also wanted to do this because I always saw like the bigger picture, which is like to become a professional footballer. And I knew that if I keep my head down and if I stay focused, that this will come. So those were just like distractions, but I knew I could like overcome it because I saw like the bigger picture. That's what helped me. Okay, so one of the things I noticed with you is, and I'm not saying this to flatter you, you're a very fine boy. So uh, it comes with its own attended problem, as in women, girls, young boy, fine boy, having big space, having time, your parents are not there to caution you. How do you deal with girls? You know, especially these days, they will just send a to your DM, tell you I love you, that you are, I see you in my dream, you are the best. How do you deal with that? I don't, know, I don't I don't really pay attention to it. I just because I'm quite focused and disciplined, so I don't really pay attention to everything. So but I just I don't really pay attention to it because I'm, I'm just focusing and yeah. 
So, I don't think it's a problem. Okay, that's, that's nice. So we're looking at uh, two, maybe in the nearest future, playing for Dortmund, Portsmouth, and Arsenal. Those are the dreams. But any other thing can happen along the line. It could be Madrid, it could be Manchester, it could be AC Milan, it could be Juventus, it could be anything, as long as you keep playing. Uh, would you say that the Lithuania League, in terms of techniques and tactics, and you know, would you say it's a good league? Is it way above the success before you play in England? Um, I think yes, it is because it's more like phys physically demanding and uh, like is 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 viable because when I first came here, I had to I had to train a lot first before I could like get like a like a good game like with the first team because I played for the B team for some time first because I had to like get to their fitness. Obviously, I wasn't training every day because I was in university, so. I understand when I come here, it will take like some time before I adjust to get to like the physical, like um, the fitness levels of like the other players. So when I got to that, I found it like good and everything. So it was good. But this is a good level to play at. What are some of the things that your coach have told you that would guide you for the rest of your career? Okay, because we had we had we have a new coach now. When I first came, we had like an. What the new coach has told me is that he believes in me. He sees me like playing at a high high league, like in the future and everything. He just said that I should be really, 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 really focused, and I should listen to what people say, like what he says and what other people say. And because I, I like to dribble a lot, I won't like to. Hear. No, it's not it's that comes from the area we come from. Yes. So what he he said to me, um he said um what like differentiates like the good players from the great players is like they can pass and they can dribble as well. Like they see an eye for a pass and everything and they can dribble as well. No when to dribble, no when not to dribble. And yeah, he was just advising me. But he believes in me, he's a really good coach. I like him. Yes. Okay, so let me let me transfer one advice as we round up. One advice that a coach gave me is okay. So before my game was built around dribbling, like I don't care if we score or win, but let me go with the memory that I put one person or two persons to the sword. I'm fine. So I went to Sweden, it was like that for me. So I get to the byline and I'm trying to do leg over or I'm trying to swap. And then the coach called me one day in training and he said, Oh, and and he said. You see the thing about dribbling, it's exciting for the fans, but it's not always exciting for them. But then there is a guy who gets the ball and sees his teammate in free position and he gives the pass and they score. That that is what is exciting for the club because one, that is what gives you more money, that is what gives you more fame, that is what brings more attention to your club, and that is what brings success. And it made sense. Well, even though at that time it didn't make sense to me because I mean, worry for that. I like to dribble, but as time goes on, I come to realize like, uh, the best player on the field is the one who puts the ball less within. You know, who know how to set the other people going. That's the best player on the field. So I just hope that. I mean, we'll keep talking to you anyway because we're, part, we're going to be part of the journey. And see how it goes. So keep talking to you. I hope that uh, you keep your head down. You've managed to stay disciplined all this time. The thing is, there is no reason not to continue to be disciplined because you have seen the result of what discipline can do for you as a small state. So the more discipline, the more commitment, the more dedication, you know that the goals that you set for yourself, the Arsenal, the Dortmund, the Postmont, Super Eagle, under 23 national team, all of that will come true. So keep being disciplined. And thank you very much, Philip Otele, for giving us all the best. But let me ask you this. Do you know how to speak pigeon English? Yes, I sabi. <laughs> okay, what about Ijo? Can you speak Ijo language? Yes, but not very, very well. Okay. All right, so uh, I need you to help me pass a message to our viewers about this corona. Tell them to always wash their hand, wear their face mask, nose mask, and stay safe and stay at home. Can you say it in pidgin English? 
I don't even know. I don't know what to say. We don't know what to say. Make on a speed for house. So coronavirus be serious. Make sure you see. I'm even moving to English. Come on. <laughs> Make sure on a speed for house. Wear mask and more than no come off for house. So you be serious. You better make it for house than hospital. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you very much, Philip, and I wish you the very best. And uh, we hope that. We See you at the very top of your game, and you will bring joy to many football fans all over the world. Of course, Nigerians and Africans to be proud as you progress. Uh, all of the lorries are available to you: League Title, Champions League, African Football of the Year, European Football of the Year, World Football of the Year. They are available for you if you work hard, stay committed, and stay consistent to the game. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for having me. Thank you. You're welcome.